Let's now move across to France, where we also have been tracking this very, very crucial election. In a tactical move, scores of candidates have withdrawn from the upcoming second round of France's parliamentary elections. Over 200 third-placed contestants, mainly from the left and the center, have stepped aside to prevent the far-right national rally, that's also known as RN, from gaining seats. And the action means that instead of an initially anticipated 303-way contests, there will be just 108 on Sunday. The move is dubbed the Republican Front. Its objective is to consolidate the anti rn vote and prevent Marie Le Pen's party from securing an absolute majority in the National Assembly. It is a tactic that has been in play before. Most notably in 2002, voters rallied behind Chirac to defeat Marie Le Pen, Marie Le Pen's, Marie Le Pen's father ra rather, pardon me on that, in a presidential contest. Only 76 lawmakers, mostly from the far right and left, were elected outright in the first round of voting and the fate of the remaining 501 seats will be determined in the runoff. French publication said 221 candidates withdrew on Tuesday and they include 130 from the left and 82 from Macron's centrist alliance. The strategic move means that of the 501 seats, 108 will have three-way races, to, two will see a four-way contest and the rest two-way races. Both President Emmanuel Macron and French Prime Minister Gabriel Attal have already stated the importance of blocking RN from power. Now, Attal claimed the national rally will be terrible for the country and the French, but the outcome from such tactical shift is uncertain given that Marie Le Pen has softened her party's image over the years, in fact. It is not known if voters will be guided by political leaders in the current climate. The first round of voting saw the RN emerge frontrunner with nearly 33% of the votes. The NPF secured 28%, while Macron's centrist bloc took just over 20%. Posters initially estimated the RN could win between 250 to 300 seats in the 577-seat National Assembly, but the tactical withdrawal could significantly alter this projection. Marie Le Pen has acknowledged the challenges ahead, and she has said that her party cannot agree to form a government if it cannot act that she asserted will be the worst of betrayals of the voters. However, she hinted at the possibility of forming alliances. Le Pen estimates if they have 270 lawmakers and need 19 more, they will ask others to participate in a new majority. But if no party secures a clear majority, France could face a period of political uncertainty. The Prime Minister has suggested that mainstream right, left and centre parties could form ad hoc alliances to pass legislation and already in the foretaste of potential tensions, Le Pen is accusing Macron of preparing key public sector appointments to hinder RN's ability to implement its policies. All right, to take this further and to give us some perspective, we are being joined by political analyst L.I.J. J. Magnier from Paris. Mr. Magnier, thank you so much for joining us here on Vion again. Thanks for joining us from Paris. And it seems like French politics is at crossroads as we speak. And the numbers we are getting from Paris speaks exactly that. There are 577 total seats. F about 76 lawmakers have been elected on the, in the first round. And there are remaining 501 seats to go to polls in the second round of elections. What becomes important here is that 221 candidates have already withdrawn. I want to ask you, how, how, how effective do you think this strategy by the left and the center is going to work this Sunday? Thank you for having me. Well, it works because candidates who have managed to get more than 12.5% of the total voters have the right to run the elections or to withdraw in favor of others who have better chances. And this is something that is normally done in the French elections when there are so many candidates and then they weigh which one has the most uh, vote and is most popular and most likely to go through. And then all the others minor uh, votes uh, or, or candidates with a minor vote then they withdraw to make sure that all the votes that going to one party 
are not scattered. So this is a good strategy that normally parties adopt. Now, the problem is uh, we are facing today in France is the fact that the Le Pen and the the right wing, are they going to abide by what they have said? They're not going to uh, accept the nomination of a prime minister if they don't have 50 plus one of the Assemblée Nationale, or they're going to accept it and then uh, ask for their share in the ruling party or in uh, the formation of the government. So this is still the question that is not very clear, and I think it will be postponed until the next Monday. All right, Mr. Magnet, taking that very last point that you made uh, a little further, I know last time you said in case it happens that the far right comes to power, it won't be the first time that the president and the prime minister are from different parties, from different ideologies. They have worked out in the past and this time as well they will. But I want to ask you, what kind of France do you envision under Macron and Bardella? I know Bardella has said that he will only become the prime minister if they have an absolute majority, but just to make a scenario and give the people of Paris uh, a vision into the future? So um, uh, the president, Emmanuel Macron, will have the foreign policy and the defense. And everything domestic will be in the hand of the prime minister. Now, if he has to cohabitate with Bardella, uh, he is inexperienced. He's 28 years old. He hasn't finished his uh, university and school. And he doesn't have really uh, a, charisma, a charisma because we've seen him in different places during the debate. Nevertheless, what the far right is advocating for is to reduce the retirement age to 60, which is extremely popular among all the French, not only the far right. He's, uh, he's talking about the immigration that, again, raises the appetite of many French people. So all these tools and to increase the salary and uh, uh, increase the wages, all that uh, find a very fertile ground for many French people, regardless their affiliation with any other party. And this is where we will see the end of the Macron era, because as he's not dealing with domestic issues, then he cannot build and capitalize on the future, because any French president cannot be elected more than twice, but he can run uh, the, uh, the uh, presidential elections after a new president is elected. Right. But by doing so, he will lose a lot of popularity. All right, Mr. Magnier, thank you so much for getting us your insights from Paris. Pleasure. Thank you for having me. For all the latest news, download the Vion app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.